Good morning, Grove Source Baptist Church. Good to see you here today. I also want to welcome you that are visiting with us. If you are visiting with us for the first time, I hope that you will take one of our bulletins. And we have a guest registration card that is on the inside that you can tear out. Please fill that out. Place it in the offering plate when it is passed so that we might have a record of your visit. And we hope that you will enjoy the worship with us today. Our desire today is worship the Lord. Are we doing it again on the service start? I can't start now? Okay. They put the thing on me again. I thought maybe I wasn't supposed to do something. Anyway, we're grateful that you have chosen to worship with us today. We're going to begin with a call to worship out of Psalm 103. And in honor of the Lord and his word, would you plan uh, stand together, not plan, stand together for the reading of his word. Psalm 103. Praise to the Lord for his mercies. Here's what the word of God says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that it is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord performs righteous deeds and judgments for all who are oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the son of Israel. The Lord is compassionate compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's pray together. Father, we, uh, we want to ask for your presence here today. Father, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth as the Bible teaches us. And Father, I pray that every family, every person that is represented here today, that they would uh, open up their hearts and minds to you. Father, we are ready to sing praises. We're ready to glorify you in all that you have done for us just for simply being God, the God of creation who created us. And Lord, thank you that you saw the need that was in our hearts because we are sinners and we are in need of salvation through grace, through faith. We thank you, Father, for that, that gift. Now, Father, help us as we join together in worshiping you and praising your name, and we give you all praise and glory, for it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing as we begin singing together. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of I want to praise the wonders of your mighty God. My comfort, my shelter, power of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I have, never cease to work. 
servant. All righty. Let me make you aware of some announcements this morning. Uh, first and foremost, we will be getting our discipleship first classes tonight. Uh, one of them, a parenting class, Growing Kids God's Way, will not begin till after Labor Day. But uh, Brother Neil will be starting his creation class tonight in the NPR. And I will be doing a Developing a Christian Worldview in a Wicked World uh, beginning tonight here in the auditorium. And those begin at 6 o'clock. So we want to encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, I believe also we have, um, do I have this right? Do we have something for the kids? Somebody help me. Yes, we do have. It's uh, Bible Skills, Drills, and Thrills. Isn't that right? Did I get it right? Yeah, Bible Skills, Drills. That's what we used to know it. And then they added thrills to it. So we're going to have some thrill with it, okay? Uh, so anyway, we will have uh, a class for our kids. So remember that and be a part of that, okay? Uh, we'll, we'll do uh, two weeks, take a break during... Uh, the Labor Day weekend, and then we'll get back on it the week afterwards with our edition, Growing Kids God's Way, uh, taught by Frank and uh, Kristen McCorkle. Okay, so remember that. Our Young at Hearts group, uh, Tuesday night together, we are leaving this coming Tuesday, August 23rd. Uh, we're going to Goldies and Pryor, and uh, we will be leading, leaving at 5 p.m. from the church. We will take a bus. We'll take two if we need to. So please sign up and let us know uh, if you plan on attending and being a part of that. Uh, our Wednesday night for kids, our uh, Team Kid program started this past week with a kickoff. And we want to encourage you all to be a part of that. Ch uh, checkup sign time is at 545. And then our actual time is at 6. We also have uh, our youth at 6. And then I teach a Bible study in here at, uh, in the auditorium at 6 as well. Uh, this coming Tuesday, August 23rd, is a runoff primary election. We want to encourage you to exercise your right and go vote, okay? And then the Young Adult Fellowship, Monday, August the 29th, they will meet in the youth room for dinner and volleyball. And we had a great time with them this last Monday night and was able to fix some food for them and Folks, I tell you what, there was a bunch of people there, and there was uh, a bunch of rugrats too. They were running everywhere. Now they were kids. I, I mean that in a in a very good way. But I tell you what, uh, it was a, a really good time to see these young families uh, coming together, fellowshipping. Uh, so anyway, you remember that, okay? I believe that's everything I want to mention at this point. Uh, let me share with you some prayer requests. We have a couple of additions that did not make our, our prayer list uh, for the weekend. Uh, one of our church members, Lloyd George, uh, who has been having some health issues, uh, is in St. John's Hospital in Tulsa. He has an infection uh, that they're saying is in, in his skull, and it's a very serious thing. So Let's remember Lloyd in our prayers today. He's uh, recently had some other health issues. And then Christy Kearns, uh, one of our church members, uh, is having a thyroid procedure this coming Tuesday. And we've been asked to remember that situation. Also, we're praying for Brad Buckner today. And uh, Brad, I had a chance to visit him in his home. He enjoys. We want to remember them in our prayers. Also, Howard Irving, who is... Home, uh, had a brief stay, a uh, brief uh, situation in the hospital uh, after uh, his uh, broken hip, so we want to remember him. We want to remember the Poindexter's daughter-in-law, Doreen Poindexter, who had lung cancer surgery. She is recovering from that in Color Colorado. And then we've been asked to remember a friend of Pat Edmondson, uh, uh, Tom Sanders. We want to remember that situation. Our schools are in full bloom as far as going, so that means our college students also. Some of our students have already started. I think some even start this week. We have a list of college students on our prayer list. We want to encourage you to pray for them. They are, uh, many of them are on the firing lines when it comes to uh, their faith and the challenges to their faith. So please remember our college students. Please remember our, uh, our uh, high school, middle school, and grade school, our teachers and administrators as well. 
Some people, that, uh, some individuals that we've been praying for, Helen Bolton, uh, Star Brown, Alan Bruns, I'm a Jean Carr, Rita Cunningham, Jean Grounds, uh, Billy Hausman uh, was diagnosed with COVID this past week, so let's remember her as she recovers from that. Uh, Danny Knight, Sandy Lemons, Tommy Noah, it's good to see the Noahs here today, uh, Charlene Pritchard, and then our Sh the Schilt family in Malawi. So let's remember these. Also, uh, Denise Smith, they're not, the Smiths are not here today. She is out in Amarillo visiting her sister, Nancy Fox, who was diagnosed with a stroke and has been in the hospital. So let's remember these situations. Let's also pray for our country today and pray that God would intervene on behalf of of our country. So would you bow with me for a time of prayer together as we pray? Father, thank you for the privilege of meeting and worshiping together. Father, I have been visiting uh, with individuals this past week, some who are not able to come on a regular basis. And Lord, they have shared with me um, how much they miss being a part of their church family. Uh, Father, I pray that we'd never take that gift of yours for granted. Thank you that our country allows it within the framework of our Constitution, so much so that it's in the First Amendment that we have the freedom to be able to exercise and be a part of, uh, of a faith. I pray, Lord, that you would help us today as a nation to realize that... Um, we have strayed away from that and that we need to get back to that. And I pray, Father, today that you would help us to uh, come back to you as the church, that we would quit listening to the philosophies of this world and that we in turn would look to your word. Father, we're going to talk about that today. Loving you means loving your word and obeying your word. So, Father, I just pray today you are our Heavenly Father. We're going to recognize you as that in one of the songs that we sing today. And, Lord, in the text today, it talks about you being our Father. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. And, Father, thank you today that you have allowed your Holy Spirit to be that comforter that is called alongside of us, that is the spirit of truth, that is the spirit of conviction that convicts people of their sins. Lord, do it again today. Convict all of us. Every one of us here are sinners today. There are saved sinners and there are lost sinners. And Lord, the only ones that, of us that, that are saved, it's all because of Jesus. So thank you for that. Lord, speak to our hearts today. And help us to be ready to accept, accept that which you've given us. Lord, um, I just pray that you would minister to each and every person. Lord, there may be someone here today that has brought a burden to this place. They have some unresolved issues. And Lord, I have a couple of prayer uh, unspoken prayer requests, Lord, that you just reminded me of that we need to pray for today. One is just... Uh, I was just made aware of it just a while ago. Father, would you intervene in these families' lives, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's a beautiful song that was written uh, last year, I believe, uh, by Phil Wickham. Uh, he's the one that uh, wrote Living Hope, which our church loves. And uh, this is a song that if you listen to Christian radio, I'm sure you've heard. We'll sing that first verse a couple of times to let you get the hang of it, but this will be new to us. But it's a beautiful hymn called Hymn of Heaven. How I long to breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets To look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him over all eternity. Let's sing that first verse again, how I long. Take it down. How I long to breathe the air of heaven where 
Satisfy my soul.
Let's stand together as we sing this last uh, hymn together. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. Let's have our ushers come forward as we uh, take our offering this morning. Just continue in this time of worship, thanking God for who he is, for what he's done for us. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today that your mercy and love are new every morning. And Father, that you are a good, good Father. Lord, that you intend good for us. 
And uh, Father, we thank you for all of these uh, folks that uh, come every Sunday and give of their time and their resources. Lord, I just pray for this uh, offering this morning that you would take it and further your kingdom. And uh, Lord, bless Brother Jim as he comes and delivers your word. In your name we pray. Amen. We have to get off the stage here every once in a while because it's just a little too tight up here. So some of us are a little claustrophobic. But anyway, as our children are going to children's worship, I encourage you to turn to John chapter 14. We are continuing our slow study in John 14. I promise you there is a day when we'll get out of chapter 14 and into chapter 15. Uh, but uh, we're, we're getting there. Um, last week I was going to share with you, you know, I think it's like, t it was like two weeks ago, um, they had what, um, sales tax free weekend or something so people could go and buy, uh, clothes for their kids, back to school, stuff like that. Maybe some other people took advantage of it. I heard the story about a, a store manager who, uh, had a particular store, it was, a uh, clothing store, and uh, as he returned from lunch, he noticed that his clerk's hand was bandaged, but before he could ask about the bandage, the clerk had some very good news. He said, guess what, sir? He said, I finally sold that terrible, ugly suit that we've had so long. Do you mean the repulsive plink, pink and blue double-breasted thing, the manager asked? He said, that's the one. He said, that's great. I thought we'd never get rid of that monstrosity. That had to be the ugliest suit that we ever had, but tell me, why is your hand bandaged? Oh, after I sold the guy the suit, his seeing eye dog bit me. <laughs> I heard that. We have uh, sound effects to go with that, I guess. I didn't realize that. 
Well, anyway, has nothing to do with my message, but anyway, uh, uh, you know, sometimes those things happen. So I uh, hope that you did not have that experience yourself. In John chapter 14, we're going to be looking at verses 19 through 24 today under the title, Enjoying the Father's Love. And folks, we see in John chapter 14 even though the word Trinity is not in the Bible, and I will be the first to admit to anybody who doesn't believe in the Trinity that the term Trinity is not there. But all you have to look in John chapter 14, just begin to read and see that you have God the Father working. We're going to see him in this particular passage today in verses 19 through 24. But we're also seeing the Son. Obviously, Jesus is there in the midst of his disciples. He's preparing them for leaving this earth. He's getting, folks, he's just hours away from being arrested. He's going to be uh, tried. He's going to be uh, uh, accused and found guilty of some things that he didn't do. And then he's going to be scourged, and he's eventually going to go to that cruel cross that we know as Golgotha. So all of these things are about ready to happen. But he's just told us here in John chapter 14 about the, the another comforter, the Holy Spirit. So we have the Godhead visibly displayed or at least mentioned in this passage of Scripture. Now, there are some groups that look at the Holy Spirit and say, well, he's just some impersonal force. But folks, the Bible clearly teaches that the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. And we believe that the Holy Spirit of God is, uh, is moving today. He is ministering to people. And uh, we looked at that last week about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so I hope and pray, and I had several people come out and say, Brother Jim, thank you for preaching on the Holy Spirit. Because we, do, we sometimes don't do that enough. And, I, you know, I think there's probably some reasons behind that. Some of us get a little nervous about it because of some of the things that have happened in the name of the Holy Spirit in times past. But, folks, we should never limit God. We should never limit God the Father. We should never limit God the Son. We should never limit God the Holy Spirit. And so I want to share with you uh, today about enjoying the Father's love. One of my favorite stories as far as an illustration in deal, it deals with a little boy who one night there was a house fire and this little boy was forced to flee to the roof before his family could do anything about it. The father stood on the ground below with outstretched arms and he was calling his son. He said, jump, I'll catch you. He knew the boy had to jump and save his life, but all that the boy could see was flames, smoke, and blackness. As you can imagine, he was afraid to leave the roof. At least he was safe there, at least temporarily. His father kept yelling, please jump, I'll catch you. But the boy protested, daddy, I can't see you. And then the father replied, but I can see you. That's all that matters. When you stop and think about that, God the Father, He loves us. We're going to see in this passage of Scripture. And folks, we can enjoy His love. We can enjoy His protection. Just like this earthly father was, was out there for his son. He was there for his son. All the son had to do was jump because the father was going to do everything he could to save him. And so this passage teaches us and talks to us about the Father's love toward us and how we should display that love by obeying and trusting in his word. I want us to look at it this morning. John chapter 14, beginning reading in verse 19. Here's what the scripture says. I'm reading from the New American Standard. It says this, After a little while, the world will no longer see me. This is Jesus speaking. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what then has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? 
Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. May God bless the reading of his precious word. Let's, uh, let's ask the Lord to be with us at this time. Would you pray with me? Father, Lord, we address you as Father today. I realize that in our world today, sometimes the term Father does not bring up good memories to some people. And Lord, that is a tragedy because we as earthly fathers, we should be an example in the way that we love our family, in the way that we relate to our children. Father, please forgive us today of not being the kind of earthly fathers that we need to be. And Lord, as a result today, we have uh, dropout dads today. We have absentee fatherism within our country. And Lord, it is uh, causing a lot of issues. We're seeing a rise in crime in areas where uh, Lord, uh, there shouldn't be. And uh, so, Father, today we, we understand that there are a lot of issues in our world, but we thank you for being our Heavenly Father. We thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. And, Lord, he is in the process here of talking to his disciples, and he's about ready to leave, and he's going to share with them that he's sending another comforter, and that is the Holy Spirit of God. So, Father, today... Would you touch us? Would you speak to us? Would you show us your love? Help us to display that love to a lost world. Help us to show uh, maybe individuals today who do not feel loved because of maybe family issues. Lord, help us to display love. Help us to show the love of Christ. Thank you, Father, for that which you have given us through your word. Help us to understand it today, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. As we look at this passage of Scripture, I want us to notice basically three things. Number one, in verses 19 and 20, we have a past presentation to the disciples. In verse 19, Jesus focuses on his resurrection and post-resurrection appearance. Now, we know that Jesus basically, you know, uh, it was a public uh, display of the... Um, of his crucifixion. Everybody saw it. People went to him. People uh, uh, saw the crucifixion. Uh, there was, you know, in that day and time, that could be a spectacle for people to go and see. So he was crucified openly, publicly. He had been, um, you know, he had been beaten to a bloody pulp, and there he is put on a cross. That is the last time that the world saw him, okay? But the disciples, it wasn't the last time. And so there were post-resurrection appearances. If you look at the passage of Scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 6, there is a passage of Scripture that tells us that after he had appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some had fallen asleep. Folks, we hear a lot about the resurrection of Jesus and we just can't accept that, that he rose from the dead. Folks, let me tell you something. I believe with all of my heart that we serve a risen Savior. Amen? Amen. We know that he's alive because he's alive in us. Now, I realize that's not much for some people today who are skeptics. We've got agnostics. We've got atheists. We've got people who just simply don't believe. So we have to, by our... Uh, witness by our the way that we live. We have to show them that Jesus Christ is alive. But he appeared to his followers. He didn't appear to the rest of the world. And so we have this. The last time the world saw him was when Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea took the Lord off the cross and buried him in a tomb. Folks, the next time the world sees him, he will come in power with great glory to judge lost sinners and to usher in God's great kingdom. He is coming again. Now verse 20 centers around the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost. 
and the oneness of the believers with the Lord. Jesus returns to heaven as the exalted one. He told me, I'm getting ready to leave you, but I'm going to send another comforter. Now I want you to listen to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 and 23. I want you to listen to what it says, because it talks about the fact that Jesus has returned to heaven and that he is this exalted one who is over the church. Listen, it says, And what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above the rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. He sent the Holy Spirit of God. He is at the right hand of the Father. Folks, He is the one that is in glory today. And He is the one that one day God the Father is going to lean over and say, go get my bride, go get the church. So these are the presentations that He gave to the disciple disciples. The comforter that the believers would be joined together. See, that the key is that the Holy Spirit has joined us together in unity and in power. We did not see Jesus, we as individuals today, we have not seen Jesus in the flesh. Only the disciples back then got that privilege. But folks, we live by faith today. And one of these days, Jesus Christ is going to come back. But we are united in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. You see, folks, God knew exactly what he was doing. After he spent three years ministering to the disciples, preparing them for, to be that church, to, to be the called out ones, he then went back into heaven. And on the day of Pentecost, we know that the, the Spirit of God came down upon the people. And what, what was unique about that, I, some people try to twist Pentecost, but folks, let me tell you something. Thirteen different dialects, these people heard the gospel in their own language. They were cut to the heart. Brethren, what shall we do? Repent. Trust Christ and be baptized, the Scripture teaches us there in the book of Acts. Yes, it was the Holy Spirit of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, there were miracles being performed. The New Testament was in the process of being written. The same Jesus that had performed miracles in the New Testament to, to authenticate the fact that He was the Son of God. Also, His disciples were able to do the same thing. And so... It is the fact that now Jesus lives within us. You hear the phrase in the New Testament a lot, the term in Christ. Okay? In Christ. Listen to a couple of scripture verses. This is one of my favorite. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old, thing passed, old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. But listen to Galatians 2.20. There's a beautiful song that goes with this someday, Matt. We need to sing. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Folks, let me tell you something. Jesus has manifested himself to the disciples and to us as believers today. And we need to understand that the Holy Spirit is there. One called alongside, one comforting, one encouraging us today. Listen, folks, he doesn't want you to fail as a Christian. He doesn't want you to be down in the dumps uh, all the time. He doesn't want you to be discouraged and say, well, I just can't do this. This is just too much. Listen, folks, the Bible says his commandments are not burdensome. He'll give you the power and the strength if you'll follow his will. Get where he is. Get where Jesus is working. Find out where he's working and follow him. That was a, that's a Henry Blackaby principle. Find out where God is working and then go join him, folks. Join him today. 
Be a part of the church. Make sure that you are a believer today. Make sure you know the Lord. Make sure because the, the Holy Spirit of God indwells within you if you are a child of God. Secondly, and by the way, Brother Ron, I think you have the wrong note, so just take those off. Uh, they'll just have to, to deal with it because that's not the first one. The first one was the past presentation to the disciples. Secondly, you have the current presentation of the Father to the believers. I want you to look at verse 21 there for just a moment. In verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Look at verse 23. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the words which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Take notice of how many times the word love is used there in verses 21, 23, and 24. Folks, that word love there, it, and in fact it means an ongoing type love. It, it doesn't mean we say, okay, well I'm going to walk the aisle one day and I'm going to say I love Jesus and then I'm going to kind of do my own thing. But, but I sure want Jesus to be around in case I get into any trouble. No, folks, that's not the way it works. If you love him, it's a continuous love. If you will continually love his word and continually love Jesus Christ, then the Bible says. And see, notice how the terms love and obey come together. They're inseparable here in the Gospel of John. John puts those two uh, words together. Love and obedience, okay? So if we treasure his word and obey it, then the Father and the Son will share their love with us and make their home with us. There in verse 23 where it says they will make their abode, that is the same word that is used in chapter 14 verse 2 where, where Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. It actually, that word means literally dwelling places. It's the same thing. Uh, it's, it's there. Listen as Jesus makes these statements concerning the believer loving Christ. And I've already mentioned most of them to you. But listen to uh, chapter 14 and verse 15, which was a previous text. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now folks, think about that for a minute. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. The proof that Jesus Christ has changed your life is not in simply words only. There will be deeds. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And folks, his commandments are not burdensome. And another thing, his commandments, everything that is in Scripture is inspired by God. And folks, that is what we lean to. That is what we look to. That is the foundation that we live our lives. It's not the prevailing winds and changes of this world. How many things have changed just in the last 20 years or so? Folks, when I was in high school... We weren't talking about some of the things that are being talked about in our schools today. We weren't talking about whether we thought we were a boy or a girl. We knew that we were a boy or a girl. We did. I got a birth certificate, folks. And I think that doctor was pretty smart. And he said I was a boy. Now, you know, uh, I figured that out pretty quick in life. But here's the thing, we, we have totally, we've allowed the philosophies of this world. You see, if you don't accept that God created the heavens and the earth, and if you don't believe that God created male and female, and if you don't believe that God created human beings, and that we're not just some chance or, or slipped out of the primor, primordial uh, warm pond, then you'll accept some of that stuff. But if you believe that God is in control and that he is creator and that one day we will stand before that creator and answer to him, you won't accept the world stuff. 
You see, there's a change that happens in a person's life. That person is born again. Nicodemus asked Jesus in John chapter 3 about it one time in the, in, in, at late at night. He asked us, you know, how can I be a part of you? How can I inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, talking about being born again, and Nicodemus didn't understand all that, but he did understand it eventually. You see, before salvation, we had affections for the world. Our priority was the world. We thought like the world, believed like the world, and acted like the world. But Jesus changed our lives when he came in and saved us. As a result of this wonderful transformation, the result of being saved is a desire for God's Word. We study it. Meditate on it. We memorize it. We allow the powerful Word of God to make an impact on us. And we obey it. Folks, it's not just enough to read it every day and say, oh, okay, I checked the box. I read the Bible today. Well, when you read it, what did you think about it? Did you put it in the context of what it, where it was being shared? Was it Old Testament or New Testament? Was it Jesus' words? Was it the Apostle Paul? Was it one of the general letters at the end? What was it? Was it one of the Psalms? Was it one of the Proverbs? What did God's Word say to you? And what do you believe it's saying to you now? And what are, how are you supposed to apply it? The spirit of truth resides in us and bears witness that we are the child of God. We are a child of God. And the Father loves us. Did you see that in the text? The Father loves us. Because we love and obey. Now, John warns us, not here in this gospel, but in his little letter. He warns us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. I want you to listen to this because it is in correlation to what I'm sharing. In 1 John 2, 15, Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, I, folks, I just read how many times here in verse 21, He who has my commandment and keeps him is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. In verse 23, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him. We will come and make our abode in him. We will live in him, that person. He who does not love me does not keep my words. You see, that's what I like about John. John didn't have a lot of gray area, folks. You either love the world or you love God. You either have affections for this world. You either think that this world is, is, is everything that you need and that you can fill the voids in your life if I can just pursue the things of this world. Folks, I'm telling you, whatever the world has to offer, number one, it will not last. And number two, it will not fill the void, the spiritual void that is in your life. Only Christ can do that. So, this is the presentation of the Father to the believers. I will love you. My Son loves you. My Son has pursued you. He has drawn you to Himself, and hopefully you will respond in faith to that and be drawn closer in your love and devotion to Christ. And folks, let me say something to you. Once you become a Christian... Once Jesus comes into your life, folks, this is a lifetime commitment to him. This is not on and off. This is not when I feel like it. This is not on certain months within a year. It is 24-7, 365. Are you willing to make that commitment? Because that was, that's what Christ is asking. Another comforter is coming. It's the Holy Spirit. Salvation leads us to loving the Son. The Father loves us. The Spirit lives within us and encourages us to draw closer to the Lord and devotion to Christ. Folks, we have a good, good Father. Amen. We just sung about it. He loves us. He cares for us. He desires for us to obey His Word and, his, and to be obedient to it. Has your life been transformed? By the power of Christ. Folks, I'm not talking about just 
being religious. I'm not just talking about uh, joining a church. I'm talking about have you ever had a, an experience where Christ has shown you your sin and has convicted you of that sin. And you have thrown yourself at the mercy of the Lord and God <laughs> miraculously comes in and saves an old wretched sinner and transforms us into a new creation. Is there evidence today that you love Jesus because of your obedience? Now please don't get the cart before the horse. There's always some individual out there say, well, okay, all I need to do is just start, being, start obeying. I just, need to, I just need to do some religious acts and that'll be fine. No, 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 folks. There's going to be a heart change. Because the heart change will lead to obedience. And that obedience will be real and it'll be lasting. The problem with today's church is that too many people have got, some people have got the cart before the horse and they're just going through the motions you're missing heaven by about 18 inches. you got a head knowledge, but you don't have a heart knowledge. All right, well, finally, here's this. There is a future presentation. It's found in verse 19. When Jesus returns, Jesus reminds us that soon this world would not see him, but that they would. And folks, this, these... These ragtag group of disciples that were about ready to throw in the towel right about now and when Jesus went to the cross, folks, something happened. You know why? You know what happened? They saw the risen Lord. When those women went to the tomb, he is not here, he is risen. Go tell the disciples and Peter in one, I believe it's in Mark Go tell the disciples and Peter. Why Peter? Because he had denied Jesus three times. He said, oh, hey, I'll, I'll follow you all the way. I'll die for you, Jesus. And within just a few hours, he had already denied him three times. What that tells me is that, folks, sometimes we're not going to be able to put up like we should. Sometimes we're going to, we, we can talk a good Christianity sometimes, but let's be honest, living the Christian life is tough. But with God's strength and with God's power, we've got, the, we've got God the Father who loves us. We've got the Lord Jesus Christ who has saved us. And we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. The fruit of the Spirit should be evident in a Christian's life. Well... The world no longer saw him, but after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples and followers. He comforted them, his disciples. Back in John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3, he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place, and if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. Folks, Jesus is coming back. He sent a comforter now. The Holy Spirit's with us. But folks, I'm going to tell you something. I believe Jesus is coming back soon. Now, I'm not going to be foolish and tell you a date. I'm not even going to give you any speculation about that. I just believe that it's very soon. Now, things can get worse in this country. I, listen, we haven't completely gone to the gutter yet. We're getting close. We need help today. Remember that Jesus was rejected by his own people. He could not reveal himself um, to them because if he had revealed himself to them, it would have been judgment for the world. But this sin-sick world, he revealed himself to the church and left the church to be the witness to the lost sin-sick world. He is patiently waiting, still giving lost sinners an opportunity to repent and be saved. You say, how do you know that? Because listen to 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness. Look at that, it's up there on the screen but is patient towards you, 
not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Folks, that's the heart of God. The heart of God is that He would want everybody to come to Christ and to be saved and to be radically transformed and to live a life that has the love of the Father and to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, there are people who are going to reject that simple salvation message. So folks, one day Jesus is going to return and we will behold him. Those of us who name the name of Christ will look forward to that day. If you are not a believer, you probably will not be looking forward to that day because you will stand in judgment. I want to conclude with a quote from uh, Warren Wiersbe in his Bible exposition commentary. He's talking about this whole chapter. Remember, it started in verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Obviously, the disciples were troubled. So Jesus, being the comforter that he was and is, he was helping them and trying to help them. Listen to what Wiersbe says. One of the best ways to ease a troubled heart is to bathe it in the love of God. When you feel like an orphan, let the Spirit of God reveal God's love to you in a deeper way. Charles Spurgeon said this, Little faith will take your soul to heaven, but great faith will bring heaven to your soul. Your heart can become a heaven on earth as you commune with the Lord and worship Him. We need to enjoy the Father's love today. First of all, by accepting Christ as Savior and Lord. And then, my friend, immerse yourself in His Word and obey His voice. Obey His Word. Do, is your life characterized by obedience to the Lord? Or do you find yourself many times going, well, Lord, you know, I kind of question that. I don't think that's exactly right. My friend, let me tell you something. God's Word is true. I don't care what you think about it. I don't care what the world thinks about it. God's Word's going to last. You and I won't last, but God's Word will. Remember that today. Feast on the love of the Father. Let Him love you as He wants to do, as He has shown that He's willing to do through His Son, Jesus Christ. And allow the Holy Spirit of God to indwell your heart today. I want us to bow our heads in a word of prayer. As we come to this time of invitation, my friend, it's, it's just, it's really clear John was very clear about what God wanted him to say. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And if you don't keep my commandments, it's proof that you don't love me. So if it's that cut and dried, which I believe it is, where are you at today? Are you a child of God? Have you repented of the sin that you have committed in your life? Do you even admit that you're a sinner today? My friend, there's only one perfect individual. His name is Jesus that lived on this earth. And he was the perfect spotless Lamb of God. That's the reason why he was able to go to the cross for your sins and mine. He's drawing you to him today. Would you respond in faith? Maybe you are a believer today, but you're struggling in your obedience, in your walk of obedience with Christ. You've allowed the world and the philosophies of this world, you've allowed the voices of this world to drown out the still, small voice of the Word of God. Maybe today you're spending more time reading everything else other than the Word of God. Would you repent of that today and ask God to give you a fresh daily infilling and digest of the Word? And let it begin once again to change your heart. 
And my friend, to make you into the person that God wants you to be. It's a lifelong process of you and I as a believer in following Christ. Folks, he's not done with you yet. If he was done with you, I think he'd take you on. He's not. So what does he want to do today? Make sure before you leave this place that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're saved and that you have trusted in Christ and that you are obeying, obeying his word. Father, in Jesus' name, allow people to come. Lord, help us as we sing this beautiful hymn of invitation, Trust and Obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Lord, may we do so today, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? There's an altar here if you need to come and pray, if you need to come and make a decision, whatever it may be, you come as we sing together. bow your heads for just a moment. We're going to allow individuals to do business with the Lord. We're going to sing one more verse. But as you're praying there in your seat, would you pray to the one to the left and the right? My friend, I believe that the Holy Spirit of God, He touches people's lives. Decisions are made every Sunday all across this country. And that is the situation that we find ourselves in. God speaks. What are we going to do? Are we going to listen? Are we going to trust and obey? Are we going to try to figure out why we can get around that? I hope and pray that you will make a commitment, a recommitment today. Ask for me in my house. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to trust and obey. Let's sing, Brother Matt, that first verse one more time. No one clo clo comes, we'll close the invitation. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. Let us do.
Now, folks, be honest this morning. Doesn't it feel good to kind of squeeze in? Amen. I'm going to tell you, it looks pretty good. Now, I, I realize some of you are having to uh, take a vacation from your usual spot. But, uh, you know, maybe the Lord's going to tell you something where you're at. So anyway, uh, thank you for being faithful. Terry and Nancy, come on up here. This is Terry and Nancy Pate. And they've been attending our church for some time. We had an excellent visit this past week. Just stand here by me. Come on. I, I promise I'm not going to bite you. Um, Terry and Nancy, we had a good visit after uh, Young at Hearts the other day. They shared their testimony with me and their years of marriage together. And is it, did you tell me six? 59, 59. 59 years of marriage, folks. Isn't that wonderful? And uh, Nancy has had some health issues, but she's getting better. But they come today to join our church by letter from the First Southern Baptist Church of Coffeyville, Kansas. And if you're excited about them coming and being a part of our fellowship, would you say praise the Lord? Praise Amen. The Lord. Amen. God bless you all. You. You. you all just remain right here. And after we've been dismissed, come by, introduce yourself to them, and let them know how much you appreciate them being a part of our church. God bless you all. All right, Brother Matt, thank you for the worship today. As we go, they're going to remain here. You come by and give the right hand of fellowship. Remember tonight, 6 o'clock, discipleship first. Okay. To the world Stand busy. I bet. Good morning. Good to have you all. Too.